welcome to the Ambition Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. My little pony, my little pony. I should not be singing this song. But why? Why not? It is a good show. <laughs> but my singing is not. <laughs> um, <coughs> I beg to differ? You can beg all you want, but it doesn't change reality. <laughs> Unless I have the reality stone. <laughs> Well, that's all you need. Well, then watch out for a guy who's into uh, excessive blingware on his hand. <laughs> he might snap his fingers and, you know what, you'll get bubbled. <laughs> ah, but anywho, today we are going to have a casual discussion about our overall thoughts and feelings for Season 7. And this episode here is sponsored by Patreon supporter Master of Lag. So thank you, my friend. Um, So let's... Well, not really get into it, but let's set this thing up. So, season seven has has and gone, and season eight is in the works. Like what? Um, we're in episode um nine now. Nine. <laughs> yes. So we have nine episodes. Well, technically, when this episode comes out, probably twelve and so on. Um, episodes to talk about. So yeah, let, let's give our thoughts and feelings for this episode because season seven was kind of a different start so let's go into first impressions for season seven well starting off it was a different season even in how it handled the opener it was two separate unconnected episodes of celestial advice and all bottled up both of which were starlight centric yeah that made everyone happy (laughs) yeah yeah And the way yeah, that I've, sorry? I've come to like Starlight, I, I enjoy her role in the show, but every time she gets center stage, I just wonder, hmm, are we still going to get the same grousing from the parts of the fandom? True that, uh, because this is the first time where the season opener doesn't start with a two-parter, which was kind of different because all of the season opener up until season seven. Yeah, up to season seven did not start with a two-parter. Even season eight start with a two-parter. So, yeah, uh, this w- the the way that it started was different. And for Starlight here, like personally for me, I thought that this season was the Starlight season. Like we're going to win away a bit from the main six, and we're going to get a new fresh start with Starlight. Like, uh, we're going to get Starlight growing up and understanding the ways of friendship and whatnot. Uh, And we're going to get that learning about friendship from a different different point of view. Like, I think we mentioned this in Season 6 where uh, Starlight here was trying to learn about friendship but taking the easy way out. And maybe we're going to get more of that in this season. But (laughs) now I'm wrong. A bit. Eh, a li- well, she did get expansion. But really, I think Season 7 could be uh, summed up in expansion. Uh, from Rarity realizing that Sweetie Belle is growing up to the point where she prefers black box... What is it? Black box uh, art presentation instead of puppet shows now? Mm, something like that. I don't even know what that is. Uh, but from realizing Sweetie Bell is growing up to uh, meeting Rainbow Dash's parents to learning more about uh, Luna and Celestia to even Flory Heart having a bit more awareness of her surroundings. True that, true that. And then in the later half, and then the later half of the se- uh, season, we get into the Pillars of Equestria and learning all about them. And not to forget Applejack's family. We get to know what happened to them. Well, not really what happened to them, but we get to know them. Ah, that's not beautiful. Ah, please don't question my masculinity if I cry. <laughs> oh, it's okay, man. It's okay. <clears throat> but this season here, it's a very interesting season because we get to see a lot of development for certain characters. Um, a good example here, season 7, episode 5, uh, Fluttershy leans in. Uh, we get to see Fluttershy start her own animal sanctuary and she starts saying or she's being really assertive with what she really wants so yeah more development i say 
Although there is an unfortunate trade-off with that. To make Fluttershy assertive, well, both in this and in a health of information, you bring in these three other ponies who are meant to help with the sanctuary setup, and they do a terrible job because it's not their field of expertise. And I feel like they were brought in to fail. And with Twilight, she is strangely apathetic or disinterested or or, or laissez-faire about Sakura's situation. Oh, yeah. It's like, this is not Twilight Sparkle. This is not the Twilight we know. What is going on? And so I'm thrilled that they're they're leaving behind the Fluttershy is scared of her own shadow mentality. But at the same time, don't make her strong by making everyone else weak. That's not, in my eyes, a good character development. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. Um, it's, it, it kind of brings down the rest just to make one look good. You're bringing me down, man. <laughs> You're bringing me down. Yeah, yeah. And other than that, this season feels like it's trying things and experimenting with things and see what works. For example, Discord. Discord here, chaotic and whatnot, but he's trying to be normal for Fluttershy's sake. And Fluttershy at the same time too, accept that Discord is weird and crazy and is embracing that. So, wow, that's just awesome. And they do talk a lot about the dynamics of relationship. There's Discord and Harmony. Uh, what is it? The uh, Uncommon Bond. They really like to emphasize... Uh, we are so different, but that's part of why we want to be friends. True that, true that. And yeah, this this season here feels like it's tying up loose ends at some places. Do you feel that way too? Let's see here. Was This was the season with Viva Las Pegasus, yeah? Mm-hmm. Let me double check. Was it? Viva Las Pegasus. Was that la- Give me a second. Eh? Uh, no, that was last season, episode 20. Okay, because I was thinking the Flim Flam brothers are kind of a loose end that may have been resolved. But uh, let's see. Flesh Islands in Friendly Dines. Get it there. We are still waiting on the ever elusive Scootaloo parents. Yeah, which was kind of highlighted in the novel, but not in the episode yet. Not yet. Yep, yep. Even though we're we're in season eight, I believe there's already been talks of season nine. Yeah, I've heard of that. Which shows too. just how impatient we are. Yeah, like everybody seems to enjoy the ponies, so that's awesome. And the writing for this show, like, it's improved, yet at the same time too, it's a bit not at the same time. How do I put this? The writing is different from when it's first started, and a lot of the writers have come and gone. It's good to see, or it's really fun to see some veterans coming back in. For example, it's Larson with Fame and Misfortune. And who boy. Even L- Larson himself has said he doesn't enjoy that episode. Yep, yep. That it was more mandated than something he really wanted to do. Which is funny because I, I still look at it and say, you know, as a fan, it pro- it doesn't feel good to watch this because it feels like it's a denouncement. Mm-hmm. But as someone who, but if you put your creative work out there into the world, it is, I think, a good warning against what you've got to face and the, the mindset with which you approach it. So believe me, it's a very polarizing uh, episode. But even if the even if the author of it himself isn't a big fan, I still think there's some merit to it. Yeah, and at the same time too, I highly enjoyed that episode because you need to learn to laugh at yourself because if you don't, you're going to be strung up real tight and snap one day. And then, and then we go to the crazy route. <laughs> oh no. But yeah, talking about nuts, uh, this season here has a lot of callbacks from uh, Ember to Torax to even the Yaks. So... What can I say? This season here was full of callbacks to old things that kind of fan favorites like Ember. Everybody loves Ember. Everybody loves the Ember. Yep. And Daring Do. Don't forget Daring Do's there. Daring Do's there, but the episode itself is uh, was maybe a little... Uh, I'm not so sure. True, 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 true. And while I'm talking here... Oh, Zakura exists again. Oh, yeah, true that. 
Um, while I'm going through the, well, sorry, while I'm talking here, I'm going through the whole uh, episode listing, and if I sound random because yeah, I, I'm just scrolling through, what I see, and at the same time too, um, I'm looking here at episode nineteen, and that is it's the main thing about you, and to me, I I see that they're really trying to go out of the box, having Rarity's main fall off and cut and having her confidence shattered by not having a good main is wow i can't believe that you do do that like wow you said do do <laughs> yeah but but is this the first time that rarity had a bad main day because in season one she had two main a bad main day like uh the one with trixie and the one with the poison joke Oh, yep, yep, Herod. Yep. But but that was with an overabundant main or changed main. This is her without a main. <laughs> yep. So, still, uh, it's one of those scenarios where they they don't mind trying new things and they don't mind doing strange things with their characters. Like way back when, you don't see this man. At the same time, there's always the risk of going this what I call the sitcom. Oh. Rooms. Which I felt like it, it is that the main thing about you is struggled with. Uh, I believe we'll get some more sitcom-esque situations in season eight. Uh, basically, that the conflict feels sort of engineered at the start. Zakura, you sure you don't want to use a different bottle? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zakura, labeling, it, it exists. Like, don't you want to label stuff? Or even a royal problem. Switching the cutie marks, oh... Uh, job swap. You learn how hard things are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me about uh, a Japanese TV show, Ultraman G, uh -huh. where the t the lead hero and a supporting hero, not quite sidekick, but parallel, they switch jobs for a day to realize how hard it is uh, for the other and what they do. Hmm. And you're just like, okay, it's a tried and true trope. It doesn't make me enjoy that episode any less. In fact, it's one of my favorites. But but you do spot uh, recurring trends or themes. And so I, I, I caution against how much of a sitcom scenario does My Little Pony want to go. Hmm, true that, true that. And talking about a sitcom kind of scenario where it's set up, we also got... Once upon a Zeppelin, where the parents, like I mentioned before, the parents says, "Hey, free holiday trip? Don't question it." Also, we got a we got a message from a Nigerian <laughs> prince. We're going to help him with his fortune. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, this episode here, um, what you call this? Once upon a Zeppelin introduces one of my underrated favorite characters, Star Trekker. Here, he's he's pretty cool. I like him. I, I really like him. Yeah, he's a, he's a good kid. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned earlier on before, Silver, the pillars. We, we get uh, This is the first time we get to see Starlight. Like, wow, Starlight. Sorry, no. We get to see Star Swole. Like, wow, we get to see Star Swole after how many episodes or seasons that he was mentioned. Like in season two, he was mentioned about his library and the time-traveling spell. And... In season two, also in Nightmare Nights, where Star, where Twilight dresses up like him, so now to see the legend in person, he's a jerk. Yes, Star Swirl the bearded jerk. Yep. <laughs> and I was so I was like, yay! I called it Star Swirl the bearded jerk. I should not be happy about this. <laughs> oh, you hope you were wrong, but no, you were right. Now here's a question of the pillars. Norman, who was your favorite mm -hmm. pillar story? Oh, I think I mentioned this before, and I really, really like what was it, Miss Mean? Was it? Yeah, M Miss Mean. But now that we have all six of them, well, not I, I, let's not count Star Soul, so all five of them. So, hmm, still Miss Mean. I, I really like Miss Mean, but because oh. sorry, no, please keep going. Yeah, because self-sacrificing you don't get that a lot in shows like my little pony so yeah 
um, and she sacrificed her youth and her looks to give it all back to her friend who was quote unquote corrupted by power. So that's really awesome. But now that we also have seen the complete legends of magic, uh, who is your integrating that with your uh, knowledge of the show? Who's your favorite pillar? Period. Hmm, favorite pillar include. See, this is a hard one because I do en- okay. I enjoy Sinembula's design because she is way out there because of the whole Egyptian team pony look. But you get um, who's the Pegasi? Who's Rainbow Dash thingy? Flash Magnus. Um, damn. Yeah, you got Flash Magnus who looks cool. And also you get, um, man, I, I need a list in front of me. Well, why can't I remember their names? <laughs> There's some Nambula, Rock Hoof, Mage Meadowbrook, Rock Hoof, yes. Mist Mane, and Flash Magnus, and Starswell the Bearded Jerk. And Stygian. Yeah. Stygian too. And it's hard for me to say because I like all of them. But if you ask me to pick a favorite... Man, that, that is hard because, like I mentioned, I like the design of Tonembola, but I do enjoy Miss Main's story. But at the same time, too, I do like um, Who is Pony with the Sudden Accent. Not really Sudden, but um, Bayou Accent. Oh, uh, Mage Meadowbrook or Cat Tick? Yeah, Mage. Mage Meadowbrook. I do like her, too. So it's like, oh, wow. The... People who created the characters, they really did a good job. It's hard for me to pick one that I really enjoy. Um, but if I have to pick one in terms of, uh, let's say, comic story, uh, let's see if I can find it in the wiki. Give me a second. Eh? Uh, but Silver, who is your favorite, by the way? Well, I agree that Miss Main stole the show with her tale. Hers is, in my eyes, the best of the, of the backstories of the uh, Pillars. But if you factor in the comics, Rock Hoof, it's sort it's sort of funny. The mediocrity of his story or the, the sheer deus ex leads into this great mm-hmm. story about how he had this gift and almost threw it away, but then earned it back. And so the comic really, really aided in just making that work. Yep, yep. Uh, that is true. Like the comic here really helps with the development of the characters. And before I... I'm just going to segue a bit for just a little while because uh, I noticed that in Season 7, they're trying to do this whole crossover thing between comics and episodes. And that's prevalent in some of the episodes that we talk about. Like, for example, is with Fluttershy and her Sanctuary. There's a follow-up comic to that one. And the last three issues that we did 58 59 and 60 those were part of some comic there too and remember the one with Pinkie Pie becoming uh, Princess Pinky something Nightmare Pinky something like that oh yes the crowned princess of chaos Alicorn Pinky yep yep and that was a follow up to Discord um, going out of existence so yeah Those two entities, the comic and the episodes, were trying to do a really interesting crossover where it's a hit and miss. But I'm getting back on track with the pillars. Um, Miss Main story is pretty solid with her episode story and her comics. So it's kind of hard for me to say otherwise. Like Miss Main here is awesome. (laughs) Indeed. And then she gets to meet young Princess Luna. Lucky devil. If we're talking about Pillars tie-ins, there's also From the Shadows, the comic uh, opener that hinted first the Pony of Shadows. Which I'm really disappointed in. (laughs) Because we never got to see uh, Shadowlock come back to confront his ancestor. Or at least say hello. I thought you'd be taller. I thought you'd be less scary. Yes, and oh gosh, the the setup for that one was rather disappointing. Like, they wanted to set up the Pony as Shadows as this huge threat where everybody should be afraid by the 
by his name and whatnot. Like Voldemort, you don't say his name. But no, in this one, we just get, I am the Pony of Shadow and I shall rule the world. <laughs> oh, there's no dark places in Equestria. They're so, it's so bright and it's, everybody doesn't sleep. What is wrong with this world? I've been defeated by gentrification. See? <laughs> so, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. The Pony of Shadow, mm, I don't know what to say, man. Like, <laughs> well, You don't need to uh, say anything. It's just, it just is the way it is. Yeah. And like I mentioned before, I am utterly disappointed in the comic for the setup. Like, what, it was issue 51, was it? Yeah, that was the start. Yeah. Was was really disappointed. But the Legends of Magic issue, sorry, the Legend of Magic comic did salvage that idea. Starting from, well, just starting from everybody getting together and fighting the sirens. Like, that whole thing was just amazing and awesome. And you get the outsider who wasn't even a pillar, Stygian. Stygian was so relatable, or so... How do I put this? You root for him. That's the thing. You root for him, you root for Starlight, who is his advocate, even without fully knowing him. And I'll, I'll say, this was a great season for Starlight. Uh, okay, Celestial Advice and all bottled up. They, they, The focus was still on Starlight. But then... It started to stop making it about her and more what she could do for the community. Uh, a royal problem. What could she do to help the sisters to change a changeling? Oh, I love that basically <laughs> she didn't solve the problem for them. She just made it worse. <laughs> so true. So true. And yet in a weird way, it did help set the stage for Thorax to step up. True that. And also you get, um, the uh, spike what spike episode was that um triple threat yeah tr you get triple threat where uh <laughs> amber confused starlight with twilight which i get confused sometimes when i have to say their name <laughs> although that's that's very species of stuff you norman i feel it i don't know if i could look at you right now no it's just the name because they're they have the same uh verbs and whatnot it's like starlight twilight and then if you insert in sunset it's like hmm i am getting so confused right now oh i see you're a namist <laughs> oh you don't get me started and if you put in moon dancer oh, well no moon dancer is moon dancer she has a very specific look that doesn't no you know what i'm not even gonna go there my head's so confused right now i'm oh, so confused yours... yeah yep and the pillars here are just what we need like we, we always wanted backstories of this show and here's what we got backstories for the show like the history and whatnot and i do like the concept of how these characters are or where their inspiration comes from and we've learned where the tree of harmony comes from which i've, I've seen people online debate that some really like the continuity Others wish that they could keep it sort of vague. It's just, you know, the god tree. Oh, yeah. True. That. I, I can see what you mean there. Like, Lauren Faust spent a seat there, but no, it was the pillars. And, yeah. yeah, Lauren Faust. I don't know what she would think. I don't think she watches the show now that she's not yeah. involved in it anymore. True, true. But Lauren did a great start. Like, people, like, she started this whole bandwagon that we're in now. She jumped ship because she didn't agree with what Hasbro were doing with the characters, but hey, we, we stuck with it until now. Yep. And we continue to, because it keeps going. True. And I'm just going to go back a bit when I mentioned about the Pillars design and influences, because you get to see Flash Magnus, and he's uh, inspired by the Romans. You get to see Miss Main, who is inspired by Japanese culture. And Rockhoof is inspired by the Nordics. Seminambula is Egyptian in base. Starswell is medieval wizardry. And yes. Miss uh, in Mage Meadowbrooks. Her design, I'm not 100% sure where she's inspired from. You got any ideas, Well, 
she is she lives in a in a swamp i wonder if there's i don't know i i don't know if there's might be a certain fashion or or presentation in that area i don't know many people from a swamp hmm well from the description on the wiki page sounded a little more eastern which thought when she thought sounded a little more eastern mm, not 100% sure by so probably cajun i don't know i don't want to i don't want to make that assumption because then people will say that's racist or that's regionalist oh god am i am i an anti swampite <laughs> well i'm just going to in my defense i'm from malaysia which is in asia so hearing accents like that reminds me of Gambit, Rogue from X Men. So I don't really know. Oh, now mon cher, Gambit be from the <laughs> by, by you, but Rogue be a Southern Star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the pillars were a really great addition to the show, and I can't wait to see more of them. And reading the synopsis, we are going to get at least two out of the six pillars. So that's good. Yeah, one wonders what they're up to right now. Yep, yep. Fanfic says that they're traveling the world, getting to know the new Equestria. And also, if you do read the Legends of Magic issue, um, Stygian, he is awesome! He is. And so, maybe he can finally go meet his, his shadow lock, his ancestor. It's like, where'd you yep. get that scar? Come on, clean yourself up. <laughs> You youngins and your whatever it is that you're listening to, dubsteps and whatnot. Uh, but uh, silver, uh, bring up a topic. Like uh, I'm, I'm at a loss right now. At a loss? Well, I think we've been covering a good deal right here. Uh, true. True. All right. We've been celebrating a lot of the the good stuff, but there've been some rough. There were some rough patches too. Honest mm -hmm, Apple. True that. Watching poor Applejack, and that was really the only. Uh, she was a very pivotal character for uh, the perfect pair, which just oh god, I'm getting weepy just saying the name. But with an episode that's focused on Applejack, oh, that did not go well. Yeah, ooh, with yeah, with, with this episode here, it's the thing that you mentioned before. You have to put. You have to bring everyone down just to raise everyone up. But this is the total opposite. <laughs> because you don't really need to elevate Applejack. She's already the best pwn. But you have to bring her down just so everyone else looks good. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Well, actually, that's maybe one of the, the big weaknesses of this season. When I look back on, let's see here, a flurry of emotions, Fluttershy leads in, uh, I don't know if rock solid friendship would qualify. I feel like when when the when the episodes are trying to show the main six having a problem, or you know it's their centric episode, it seems like we're at the point now where it doesn't feel as genuine if they're the ones struggling. I think mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. their role in Equestria has grown to the point where it's more about what they can do. Uh, what can they do to help others? It's more about them bringing their best to the rest of the world. If it's trying to focus on just them having the problem, then it, I think it comes off often as a weaker episode. True, and I, I see what you mean. And at the same time, too, um, include a health of information. In my opinion, this episode was not bad, and I don't really feel or really see the problem with this episode. But I believe that you mentioned that Twilight was quote unquote out of character for this oh, episode yeah. with how she doesn't really have any urgency for Zakura here. Well, yeah, she, she felt no urgency. She felt no, she didn't seem the least bit concerned that her friend might become a tree, which I got to say, in terms of lethal diseases, that's very inventive. <laughs> oh, that is bad. But at the same time, too, we get major story in here, too. And her story here was not bad, but let's just say it's no Miss Main. But I think the show has evolved to the point where uh, if it's just about the main six having a problem, it doesn't 
work as well as it did early on when we were just getting to know the characters. I'm jumping ahead to season eight and the non-compete clause. But <laughs> great episode for the students, not so great for the ponies. Yeah, if you guys seen it, it's kind of funny, haha. But it's at the cost of two ponies. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. But I guess that's just the theme that's coming off for me. True. And yeah, I do agree that we've been with the characters for, what, eight years now, is it? Yeah. It's been yeah, it's we... been a long journey and a good one. Yep. We've been with the characters for eight years now. And we kind of grew up with them like it's almost a century a century right a century so uh, 10 years is what now a decade uh, yes a decade so it's almost been a decade with this character so we've grew up with them and we kind of know know them like we like i mentioned before we grew up with them and we kind of understand them at the same time to like i remember dusty cat mentioning this and it's the writers. Sometimes new writer doesn't really understand how certain characters should act or react. I can agree with it, but do I agree with it? It's another scenario or another thing there. But it's something to keep an eye on moving forward for the future. True that, true that. And the black sheep for... How do I put this? Um, the, the elephant in the room. Well, they, is... they didn't have any elephants. They didn't in a One My Little Pony comic, but we don't speak of that. <laughs> uh -huh. But anyway, um, the elephant in the room is that season seven was so full of leaks that you needed to bring, you needed to go to a court convention to plug it up. Yeah, the funny thing is, Norman, I'm pretty sure there, somewhere in this world there is a court convention. <laughs> the, the, the world is diverse and strange enough that I, I'm almost... Sure, that exists. <laughs> yep. But anyway, um, talking about the leaks, like this season was full of leaks. And the funny thing is, it's official leaks from the treehouse in Canada to Boomerang in Australia and to Russia. Like there was a lot of leaks going on with this season where it was out of control, where even the season finale aired stupid early. It, yeah, it, it was crazy. It was a, And it was a mad, mad pace. Yep. Oh, wow. Um, I've talked to Twilight Genesis, um, who is one of the regular on the show, and he is one of the moderators for the Australian, uh, what was it, Perf... Brony group, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and he mentions to me that when things like that happens, it's a real headache to control spoiler talks because some people want to, some people don't mind spoilers, some people mind spoilers. And he is a big headache for him to set the rules for, okay, you are allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that, and so on. So yeah, season seven was full of leaks that came out. And I remember way back in the days when we welcomed the leak because, yay, we get to see the episode early. Yay! But season seven is like, oh my god, there's so much episode that I don't know how to do or I can't catch up. Oh my goodness. Uh, but, hey, I'm glad we didn't, we aren't having that in this current season. But it was, oh, it was tough. It was demanding. I mean, I did Pinkie Pie Says Good Nights before each two episodes. So suddenly... It, it's not a quick and easy process, especially if you have new characters. True that, true that. But I digress. That just gets into a pity party. But yeah, and then, <laughs> and now this season we had a bunch of leaked episodes, but we're almost through Ooh. those. Yep, yep. And, oh boy, it's like, okay, um, we are going to save season eight discussion for when it ends. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, let's also talk about Princess Celestia in Season 7. Mm. Celestial advice yeah. showed that she wasn't so calm and composed behind the scenes. She was worried for Twilight. And then we got to mm -hmm. see... This was probably the most personal season for her. It showed her connection to Twilight, her love for her sister, and the, the 
duality between them. I was sort of disappointed they didn't get to take part in the season finale, crowded though it was. But it was something important to them, the, the fate of their teacher. True, 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 true. Uh, but still, Celestia and this season had more screen time from the Celestial Advice where she left at Twilight with such a troll. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, no, she was just um, reminiscing about how funny it is because they were similar and whatnot. Well, yeah, I mean, no one wants to have their, their idol laughing at them. Mm, true that, true that. And at the same time, too, you also had the <laughs> one of the uh, some people like it, some people don't. A royal problem where, yeah, this is a very fun episode, which was done in the comics first with Friends Forever issue 6. Was it the micro? No, it was micro issue 10. 10, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, it was done there first, but yeah, this one was just a mad rush. It was a mad rush, and it was it got to tackle things from both perspectives which is important mm -hmm. and they got to introduce a new character woohoo always welcome yep yep and fanfics and arts were all over the place with a who was her name right there daybreaker Day yeah daybreaker Ooh, much funs much 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 funs but uh, with that uh, what else could we add in because i'm trying to think and this season was really a lot of fun like i i highly enjoy the direction that the show took this season in yeah i enjoyed it as well it expanded cast uh new locations uh mm -hmm. development and even fleshing out of of characters who we may take for granted but it's like oh i never knew that yep and lore more lore more lore that that's I think that's always welcome when you're there, it's nice to know that there's a history beyond just star swirl even though you still involved. there's still five degrees of star swirl yeah true that true that and also more parents and I believe that we've met all of the parents for the main six for the main six yes 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 but we're still waiting on scooter parents yeah scooter parents is one of those things that we need to know and yeah, we also, um, kind of a spoiler, not really, we got to meet up with Sunburst and Starlight's parents, so yay. Well, that that was uh, this season, uh, season 8. True, true, uh, true, but it's just worth pointing out because um, I think Hasbro, or I think, yeah, I think Hasbro knows that we really want that because, hey, it's a lot of fun looking at the parents like funsies. Although... When we get to season eight, I can talk about the very awkward tragedy of Trixie's dad. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I shouldn't laugh, but oh my goodness. Uh, her dad, which was quote unquote confirmed by people or people who work for the show, but uh, you know what? That's something for next season. That's something for next season and something when we pass by it. Well, yes, I could talk about Big Jim and his trollish ways. Mm, true that, true that. Uh, Uncommon Bond. What was Uncommon Bond? Uncommon Bond was where <laughs> Sunburst has his own kind of harem. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, but but overall, this season was a lot of fun. And would you count the movie as part of season seven or not? I would count it as part of season eight, as it leads into uh, many of the events. Well, there is no carryover from uh see from season seven no pillars even Trixie and starlight are just sort of hanging out on the edge there yeah yeah I, I can see that and well with the movie it's part of his own lore but eh, we, we reviewed it we talked about it yeah that that's up for discussion probably you know go go watch our review of it we, we talked about it and we had a lot of fun with it and ultimately, that's the test of a season. Did you have fun? True, 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 true. And I did. I highly enjoyed this season. Like, there were a lot of, oh my god, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that they do that. This episode is awesome. Woohoo! And we get, yeah, I, I had a lot of those moments. What about you, Silva? Oh, I had a lot of those moments as well. So I th there were moments that are just, 
I thought it was very funny. There were moments where I was just, oh, you're hitting me right in the feels. Help me, Norman. I'm feeling. <laughs> oh, one. I, I think we're um, not mentioning or we're kind of, we're not really avoiding, but we're almost forgetting the songs for this season. And they were the thought, the thought. not a lot. The so- well, okay. You're in my head like a catchy song. Mm-hmm. That's the standout, but that's because it, it just, it took everything. Yeah, oh, yeah, like it, it hit you right in the guts. Right in the guts. But honestly, I'm trying to think of what other songs were in this season. There were only like five, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we got five songs. And I'm cheating because I'm looking at the wiki right now. But oh, How could got... you? I'm sorry. But anywho, uh, we got uh, Best Friends Until the End. Which is not a bad song. I highly enjoyed this one. This song is awesome. It's catchy, and but it helps highlight the uh, contrast between them and Starlight and Trixie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. And it was a really fun song. Like, the contrast was really good. And uh, the second song up on the list was Battle for Sugar Bell. Hey, we forgot to mention Sugar Bell and Big Mac. They're an item. <laughs> I guess because it was just sort of like, oh, here are two characters. Now they like each other. Okay, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, uh, pff, Big Mac got to... Oh, Peter New got to flex his vocal cords with Big Mac on this one. <laughs> and let's see here. There was Spike and A Changeling Can Change. That was season six. What? Oh, dang it. I, I keep seeing to change a changeling and that's all I think of. Oh, well, really? That was season... F- yeah, that was season six. Okay, so what... Okay, there was Rumble, Blank blank Flanks Forever. Yep, yep. And uh, in, in my head, like a catchy song. Oh, that was that was awesome. Like, that wins hands out for best song for season seven. Hands out. But then I'm trying to think, what was the other... Now, I have Fame to look. Mis- <laughs> Fame is Misfortune, you got Flawless. That was oh, a really good yeah. song, too. Oh, yes. And I think we've listed down all five songs. There you go. So, out of all the five songs, which one was your favorite? Like, top oh. five then. Like, yeah. uh, oh, okay. Uh, in my head, like a catchy song, A number one. Mm-hmm. Well, dang it all. Now I actually have to just look at the list to get it in my mind. You want me to link it to you? Well, let's see here. I think I can get it. Yeah, I'll, there you I'll go. need the songs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. So, let's say, Perfect Pair, You're In My Head, Like a Catchy Song. Best Friends Until the End of Time, Flawless, Blank Flanks Forever, and The Battle for Sugar Bell. <laughs> I, I, yeah. my, list would, my list is a bit similar to you, um, but you know what? I'm going to try and be honest with myself because I like um, Best Friends Until the End first, uh, and You're In My Head Like a Catchy Song second, Flawless is third, uh, Blank Flanks Forever is fourth, and Battle for Sugar Bell is last, for obvious reasons. And it lasted for three minutes, my goodness. M's a lot of cringe. I know! <laughs> uh, it's almost as bad as Spike singing. And I'm not talking about to change the changeling. And I'm, t- I'm talking about that time when he sang the anthem for Cloudsdale. Oh, God. Oh, we're the Wonder Waltz and we're okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so, uh, so that is, we covered songs and what else, man? Like, I, I think that's about it. Well, that's a good deal right there. I mean, yeah, songs are important. We've we've covered characters. We've covered the growth. We've covered the pitfalls. I'm just happy that se- after seven seasons, I'm still having fun with this show. Same here, man. Same here. Like, the most important part for any show is if you're enjoying watching it and if you can have good discussion with your friends about it, that means the show is good. Like, who is stronger, T-Rex or Jiren? Well, Jiren's just god modded. <laughs> uh, I'm never going to let that one go. <laughs> never, ever, ever. Yep. Uh, but I, I think everybody's curious about our favorite episodes for season seven and i am going to cheat and say i like them all even the honest apple episode because i can find value in it 
But Silver, what about you? Like, honestly, do you have a top five or are you in the same boat like me? Well, I think I can list. I don't know if I can rank them. Right. Uh, Perfect Pair is probably the best episode of the season. Mm-hmm. Followed by A Royal Problem. Oh, yes. I really enjoyed Celestial Advice for the, the look it gave behind <laughs> Celestia. True, and true, I like, uh, let's see here. Flur- uh, Flurry of Emotions gave uh, gave the royal family some fleshing out as well. We finally got to see Kings of Shining doing something. And, yeah, do something. <laughs> and Flurry became a more likable character to me as a result. Oh, true that, true that. Actually, just before that, I would put two change a change thing for the introduction of uh, Pharynx and get... You know the the new changeling look oh, was yeah, more, yeah, yeah. was more real and enjoyable to me because of that episode. Every time this show introduces a big change, including you know Twilight with wings, the new castle, the changelings, and the new pastel look. Sometimes I get used to it. Sometimes I don't. Still not really mm-hmm. sold on the castle, but I wasn't a big fan of the changelings when they changed. But now. I enjoy their look more. In fact, I think I may actually prefer it to uh, the old <laughs> horde. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because we wouldn't have Ocellus under the old horde. Yeah, man. Like, Ocellus is just, you know what? That's for season eight stuff. Like, that, I'm going to keep that for season eight. But for me, my favorite episode in no particular order, because I can think of a rank, is uh, Celestial Advice I like in that episode. All bottled up because I do like the starlight rage. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, you have to be really patient with Trixie. Goodness. Um, Rock Solid Friendship was the episode where, yeah, that one was fun too. Um, looking at how Starlight and Mod can relate on a whole different level <laughs> and they don't like cowbells. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Parental Guidance. You have Rainbow Dash's parents in this one, and just looking at how over the top they are was fun. A Royal Problem was a good one too. What was asking for? Not asking for trouble. That one was the yaks. Now, uh, what was this? The Perfect Pair, top top notch episode. They're really great, really great. I know you're not a fan of the Silver, but Fame and Misfortune. I like this episode a lot because it's meta in how it tells the story. Well, I'm a fan of it in for different aspects. Less a fan in other ways. Uh, okay, understandable. Triple Threat is another one I enjoy because Ember! Yay! Uh, Ember and Torex back together. Some people ship it. Do you ship it, Silver? I ship just about anything. <laughs> Yay! Although dating a changeling, it's like, well, what's the, what does they really look like? Well, they, they look like what they look like before they transform. I mean, come on, like, you know what? This is a PG rated show. My, you, no, 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 I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know what? No, I'm just gonna draw the line there. No. Changing, I mean, dating a changeling is fun. That's all I have to say. Oh, oh it's fun. Oh, <laughs> Norman, you kinky devil. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes. Mm. And you know what? Like I mentioned before, I like this season a lot. There's a lot of, episodes that i really like and it's the main thing about you like that episode there was fun having rare punk rarity is just awesome i'm just gonna start a new thing hashtag norman kink <laughs> no don't uh but you know what like i mentioned before i highly enjoyed this season there was a lot of good episodes that i thought were top notch like if you asked me to risk five of them i couldn't because i love this season and silver you have more s- seasons that you highly enjoy or did i cut you off well i did my top five i mean like you say there were a bunch of episodes that were just really really fun i guess it just comes down to what had the biggest impact for me what what really Mm -hmm. fleshed out this world because i too loved meeting rainbow's parents and then wondering (laughs) who was that stallion in the flashback of uh yeah a cousin or a mentor or uh uncle I'm going to assume yeah, that, um, that Bo had a brother. Yeah, obviously. You know what? It's not obvious because we're never going to get to see him again. 
Oh, well, we did. Uh, he was in the background of Heartswarming Tale. So <laughs> that is even more confusing. <laughs> yeah, he got invited to Heartswarming in Ponyville more than Rainbow's own parents. What does that say? What does that say? Brother? Probably. <laughs> uh, Rainbow strikes me as an only child. Yeah, she is. Because if not, they would have been doing the whole competitive thing because, oh, uh, Rainbow's brother is um, so-and-so on this place and place. Like, oh, what's Rainbow Dash going to do about it? Like, eh. Probably uncle, cousin. That's the um, highest guess, I guess. Well, who knows? Mm-hmm. Maybe the show staff. Yeah, true. <laughs> Not even the show staff. They they say that uh, um, we got no idea. <laughs> and with that, I I think it's time for us to take our leave. We've been uh, brewing up a storm for almost fifty plus minutes now. Well, it's a good season with lots to talk about. True that. True that. I mean, if we kept on talking about this, we would go back and forth, enjoying a lot of things. And if we had a lot of other people in this. Oh boy, the discussion will be great. Like, just imagine um, Calping from EQD coming in, talking with us, Dr. Wolf talking with us, talking about this season and whatnot. Like, that would have been great. Well, there's always there's always projects for the future. Mm-hmm, true that, true that. But hey, um, it's nice just having both of us here. And for, for people who are wondering where Sappy, um, technically, this is today is Mother's Day and family comes first. So... She needed to do stuff with her family, and I don't blame her. Nope. I'll be seeing my family later on this evening. And as for me, it's the future. Well, technically, when this comes out, it's already the future. <laughs> uh, it's obviously to be. But still, uh, season 7 was fun, and season 8 is going to be a hoot. A hoot and a holler. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, anywho, Silver, with that, let's end it here and say that we enjoy season 7. Agreed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, next week, I think we need a little magic in our lives. Granted, we just had friendship as magic, but now we get to have high school magic with Equestria Girls. We'll be talking yeah. about we'll be talking about uh, music magic, movie magic, and mirror magic all in one go. Awesome, awesome! Because it's been a while since we talk about the Equestria Girl line of stories or episodes because you know what i i am so confused with equestria girls right now because if you take a look see at eqd they listed down a post about um how the season is going or you know what like which episode is there pick one and you'll get to see the updates and whatnot like it's so confusing we're so confused our tidy minds are broken yep that is so true because you got the pick your own adventure. Uh, you got the shorts, and you. That is a discussion for another day. Yes, but Eat. right now we are going to do the, as they say, magical movie night, for the DVD special, which was done by Short Factory, and the movie magic, color, uh, correction was bad. It's bad, and you should feel bad when watching it. Uh, no, you should feel happy for watching it, but still. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, that's for the future. So next week, we're going to do the Movie Magic series. Yay! Yay! So Huzzah. anywho, yes. So anywho, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank... Lurker Cat, Starstream, myself, like Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys so much. You have been really, really awesome. And what about you, Silver? Who would you like to thank and give a shout out to? Well, I'll be, I will have been just returned from Everfree Northwest by the time you all hear this. So I want to thank everyone who made it just a fun and enjoyable weekend. All the fans who attended, uh, all the community guests who were part of it, and all the guests of honor who were kind enough to get, devote their time and energy to as a fandom. It's what I enjoy about conventions in general. And I wish I could have gone. Ow. <laughs> there may yet be opportunities. But I also want to thank folks for supporting me on YouTube, DeviantArt, and my Patreon. 
And so I'll uh, look forward to getting more content out soon. Yep, yep. Because more content means more episodes, and that means more. Well, I, I got no idea what it means. All I know is more content. Like I, I do love the content. <laughs> In the mid hour, they cried more, more, more. That's true. That's true. But anywho, uh, I have been Norman Sando. I am Zisir Vakril. And we'll guys catch you next week with more reviews or discussion in the future. Yay! See ya! Adios! Season 8 is going to be a big headache. <laughs> we'll see. I have plenty of have to leave on hand. Just in case. Yes, yes.